Architecture is part of an ecosystem connected to a complex urban metabolism. Yet, our built environment is designed to detach us from these critical life-sustaining systems, rendering us unaware of the impact of our lifestyles. What if architecture became an integral tool to better connect people to these systems and their associated resources? This project explores how to facilitate this through the creation of a new approach to urban development that celebrates urban metabolic processes by enabling hyper-localised, community-led resource management. The broad aim of the project is to help facilitate the transition towards a more regenerative and restorative society labelled as a symbiocene. The project is not positioned as a utopian eco-vision, but instead as a transitionary tool that can be applied to existing communities. On a more granular level, celebrating these systems aims to cause the following societal changes. Firstly, a detached to an attached society. As mentioned, there is a concerning disconnect between communities and their life-sustaining processes. People do not act on what they don't understand, and a lack of transparencies in production processes clouds moral consumption decisions and power to make informed consumer choices. A more attached society would result in more informed consumers and can be achieved through greater transparency in the supply chain, as well as simplification and localization of production processes. Secondly, individualism to social cohesion. Our current individualistic mentality is hindering our ability to create meaningful, coordinated change. Individualism reduces social capital and the willingness to engage in community action. The climate and ecological crises are faced by us all and therefore require collective action. Ownership models need to shift to a sharing economy, which can also be applied to resources in order to remedy current inequalities and motivate action. Fourthly, linear to circular economy. Our current take-make-waste extractive industrial model is not only wasteful, but also detrimental to our natural systems. The circular economy model offers an alternative that keeps materials in use, consequently restoring and regenerating natural systems. It is also conducive to a more local economy, which will create jobs and revitalise the economy in a more just way. Finally, centralisation to decentralisation. Centralised governance is often crude and neglects a place's individual needs and is failing to make the changes required to remain within our planetary limits. Decentralisation gives more power to the local people to make decisions about their area, resulting in increased empowerment to make positive change, helping decrease eco-anxiety. Decentralisation in this context focuses on the management of resources and control over local development, and in this way can have positive social effects while decreasing emissions and increasing resilience. Therefore, this project sits at the local scale, enabling coordinated and meaningful bottom-up action. There are five layers to how this project seeks to achieve these aims. Firstly, community is at the heart of the project, with the main theme revolving around giving the community a new focal point for activity and more agency over the management of resources. Secondly, through creating opportunities and incentives for the creation of a local economy through a local currency and incubation opportunities for local businesses, focusing on sustainability. Thirdly, resources are created and kept in use at the local level. This in turn aids with the understanding and transparency in the systems, which will help facilitate changes in behaviour. Fourthly, the construction system should be conducive to the type of society it aims to create. It should therefore be designed according to circular economy principles. Finally, data, information and an open source approach to learning and innovation is essential to this project and the realisation of a wider circular economy. The project proposes a methodology for implementation of a network so it can be applied in different locations, ensuring the outcome is always responsive to its local context and addresses relevant local issues. It also proposes a hierarchy for the surrounding buildings, with materials focusing on retrofit first through to reuse, then recycling, and lastly, low carbon virgin materials. Another strand of the concept is on the role of religious buildings as social nuclei coming into question due to more diverse communities with varying religious beliefs and more people with no religious beliefs. This consequently erodes the social significance of religious buildings as places to enhance social cohesion. Often instead, they can be divisive and contribute to a them and us mentality. So what can replace the significance of religious buildings today? Environmentalism can be argued to be a new form of religion due to the provision of a common collective purpose, providing meaning and a set of morals to live by. It also provides consequences for action, or in the case of environmentalism, inaction. It can play a significant role socially, bringing people together around the shared vision and renewed sense of purpose that transcends our differences. Based on all the above, it can also be a landmark representing something bigger and more meaningful than ourselves. This project aims to create an architecture that is iconic of environmentalism. The design of this took inspiration from forms found in nature and an architectural language was developed and refined through a series of digital iterations. Newham was chosen as a test location for the project due to having some of the worst recycling rates in the UK, plans to undergo major development and also ambitions to transition to a more circular economy. Canning Town was chosen and analysed with various opportunity sites. A master plan was created that earmarked the location for different materials to be metabolised based on what was in the area. For this project, I zoomed in on the household zone for further design development, creating a programme of hybridised community and metabolic uses. The building sits 
both sides of Newham Way with a landscape level spanning over the road, containing entrances to some of the key buildings in a marketplace. On one side of the road is the general waste and recycling processing, and on the other is the food waste and anaerobic digestion and urban farming. Over time, as the community becomes more sustainable, the elements of architecture, like the digesters, could be repurposed into other uses and taken over by the community. As mentioned, the purpose of the project is to help drive community change through exposing them to the consequences of their consumption. It also celebrates a system that sustains their lives and gives more agency and control over their management. The drawing aims to depict some of these interactions between the community, building and systems. Here, a community member sees their own waste from the conveyor belt, which in turn encourages him to buy a reusable item with the local currency from the reuse shop made of materials on site. He then wants to make further change, so uses the incubator space to come up with a new local reusable packaging that he then manufactures on site and sells at the market. In turn, this action and those of other characters he meets along the way results in less weight on the conveyor belt over time. The building seeks to be a landmark in Canning Town, representing a move towards a more sustainable future. The form is deliberately celebratory, forming an iconic part of the cityscape. Within the landscape of the building, the community can become aware of the vibrations of the equipment, the pumping of the water and the smells of the waste, making the building a sensory and educational experience intended to drive changes of behaviour. Local reuse and recycled materials are prioritised to make the building responsive to its context. In this way, the architecture can tell a story of the history of the area in which it is located, while also being more resource efficient with lower embodied carbon. Therefore, the construction detailing is also flexible to allow for different materials to be used depending on their availability. The building is designed to be durable, but also deconstructible at end of life with no reversible fixings. Appliances and equipment are procured using products as a service business models. On the ground floor, waste is dropped off, picked up and taken to other parts of the master plan. The existing buildings on site are repurposed rather than being demolished and the metabolic network weaves in and out of the buildings. This shows how the new building sits above the existing structures. This view is from the ground floor workshop with the guts of the recycling system. It also sits within one of the repurposed buildings. In terms of the system themselves, there is a central recycling tower that sorts the waste before taking it to the different spires for processing through a system of trommels, star screens, magnet separators and eddy currents. There is a district heating and cooling network that uses residual heat from the industrial processes, heat from the Thames, from the sewage network and from the data centres. Rainwater is collected via the roof canopies before being delivered down the water tower and recycled on site. Organic waste is anaerobically digested and the biogas turned into electricity. This combined with roof PVs and wind turbines help run the processes in the building. According to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, open data and greater knowledge dissemination are key enablers of a more circular economy. The digital platform makes information and data readily available to the local community to inform consumer choices and increase transparency. It also allows users to monitor and track materials through material passports, engage with the development in their area, organise and attend events and events locally. The platform can also be used to connect and compare different communities and share learnings. The data is then superimposed onto a map and augmented reality for exploration. As users get closer to the building, as does the granularity of the augmented data. The building is part of a wider ecosystem of resource flows throughout Canning Town. This project has focused on the household waste zone of the master plan, but in reality is about a metabolic network of infrastructures that help Canning Town to transition to a more symbiotic relationship with its systems, the environment and with each other. The intention is that the project is a pilot manifestation of the idea of celebratory communal urban metabolisms that could be applied in multiple locations and eventually become a new approach to sustainable urban development. I want to finish with this poem about a parent explaining the changes in society to their child. The rumble of metabolism, smells, vibrations, pumps and sounds fill the bustling streets of Newham's Canning Town. But when my child asks me what her future will entail, I can tell her with some confidence that we will prevail. How once upon a time we used to live in isolation, ungrateful for the systems, reliant on other nations. How we had no control over the resources we need, which made us vulnerable to global shocks and corporate greed. How we extracted and exploited, blind to our impact, but we seized responsibility and learnt to adapt. I take her on a walk around the town that sustains us and show her all the systems, the metabolic guts. She now has control to make sustainable decisions and will be more secure with locally sourced provisions. So I can say to you, my dear, your future is secure, but you must learn from what you see to make sure it's ensured. Continue to appreciate the system you've relied and maybe then the metabolic rumble will subside.